Oklahoma State's offense, uh, what jumps at you, jumps out at you first? Explosive plays. I think they push the ball down the field really well with their uh, in their pass game. Um, probably take a few more shots than most teams in the country. Um, and they've got the guys that can go up and get it. And they've got a quarterback that extends plays, um, which is a, a dimension that, uh, you know, when he's not there, it's a, it changes the game uh, considerably, you know, uh, as, as evidence. And over the past couple of years, there have been a couple of games where they haven't had him, and you can see the production go down um, just because he's such a special player. So, um, you know, but uh, explosive plays are certainly the first thing that comes to my mind. I know last week you said you weren't a big stats guy, but looking at stop rate, you guys are around like 53rd ish in the country, allowing getting off the field 66% of your times. Is that about where you want to be, or what's a realistic expectation no, of course, for you? Of course not. No, I, it was probably one of the biggest. Uh, um, Source of stress last week was was that we just, we just didn't do a very good job. There's been games where we've done a really good job, and um, you know we just need to get off the field and give our offense more opportunities. You know, and and uh, uh, you know we're we're not. Um, it helps us too. It helps us stay fresh, and it helps us. You know, when we're not having to play 85 plays, and that's you know I don't blame anybody for that, but ourselves not not being able to get off the field on third down. Talk a lot about their down, but how important is first down in terms of getting off the field? You know, it's funny because we, we've been doing a better job of that this year. Um, and we've been doing a better job on third down too, uh, uh, up until last week. But uh, we've been doing a better job of that this year, of putting ourselves in third and manageable stuff uh, because we're doing a, a more disruptive job, maybe more sound job, whatever on on, on base downs, first down. Um, but we're just not. Uh, um, yeah, so I mean, every down support, every you know, it, it all matters. But yeah, we're, we're trying to set ourselves up so that we're not in third and one, third and two all the time, and we can we can uh, tee off a little bit more on those long yardage situations. Say for one play, do you feel like you held Johnson in check pretty well on TCU? Yeah, and it's unfortunate on the on the one too because it was kind of a, a fate uh, thing there that uh, um, you know injury situation that. Uh, uh, I thought I thought you know I, I never worry about Julius Brents in those situations against anybody. Um, he's as good as they come in the country, and 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 yeah, Julius was doing a good job with him, um, and uh, and and for that matter, you know when we matched him up with other people, other people did a good job with him too. And Josh Hayes had a couple of trips with him in the slot, and Echo Boydo had a couple with him uh, throughout the game. Jacob Parrish even had a couple, uh, and uh, I thought those guys uh, were up to the challenge. You mentioned two of them there are, are Josh and. Uh, Julius on track to play this week? Yeah, Julius has uh, practiced. Josh has practiced. Those guys will play this week. How about Daniel? Do you know anything about him yet? He's going to be a, a game time decision. He's uh, moving around um, some and, and getting some uh, some some uh, work. Um, his how, how much he's able to go uh, is going to be a, a question. How much did you have to adjust last week without him in there at linebacker? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, um, you know, it's kind of been the deal, you know, is, is just the revolving door of, of, of people. I, I, don't, I have total faith and confidence in Nick Allen uh, to get the job done. You know, Nick's gotten a significant amount of reps over the past couple of years. He's, he's shoot in the Oklahoma State game last year. He played uh, three quarters of the game because uh, Daniel got ejected for targeting in the first half. People remember that. Um, and, you know, I, I never worry about Nick. I think he's a warrior. I think he totally understands what we're doing. Uh, very strong and um, can can get the job done physically in there. Uh, can run the show mentally. So we didn't adjust anything based on that, um, you know. But certainly like having him in there. Speaking of targeting, do you have to do you have practice reps a little bit to plan for Khalid not being in yeah, there? Yeah, that's always time? been a uh, dealt with this a few times in the in the career. Not often, fortunately. Knock on wood. But uh, that's a, that's a weird, really weird deal. Yeah, because you you want to get uh, you know the guys that are going to be playing in his stead. You know more the normal. We we do a pretty good job, I think, though, of of equally balancing our reps with our ones and our twos. So when those guys' numbers are called, they're not, you know, they've been sitting on the shelf for months. I mean, they're they're getting the same amount of practice reps as, as the uh, as the quote unquote starters. That being said, in the second half, does Khalid's rep share maybe change a little bit compared to what it normally would? Depends on what type of a game it is. It could, um, you know, and, and there's certainly things that you do with Khalid that you may not do with anybody else. Not 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 a knock on anybody else. It's just. Khalid's skill set is so special in certain areas, and so, um, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, that uh, we'll see how the flow of the game goes. Is all questions that answer on Saturday. Besides Nick Allen, is anyone else's snaps going to change drastically without Daniel Green? Being I think uh, I think Jake Clifton will will see some more time. I think Gavin Forche will see some more time. Both those guys have been in games a little bit. Uh, Gavin uh, played a decent amount last uh, last week, especially in the second half. Um, I think those guys' will, reps will uh, will increase, and I think you'll 
you know, Austin Moore will obviously he's been rolling, but uh, he may have to may have to go the distance. When you look at the explosive plays, um, like you mentioned, uh, to my knowledge and recollection, two explosive plays for touchdowns. If that had been TCU's kind of thing, do you feel like you did a good enough job limiting those explosive plays? No. You know, obviously the answer is always going to be no, unless you don't have any. But uh, you know, the, the first one uh, was was a, was a technique error, really, and and uh, um, just didn't. Uh, it wasn't even the design of the play to, 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 for it to happen the way it happened, and it just uh, uh, you know, quarterback did a nice job extending the play. They had a really fast kid and didn't play it uh, very well, and and then it happened, and unfortunately it happened right out of the gate, and um, you know, then then the, the you know the. The Julius Brents one, you know, is, is kind of a, you know, act of God, I guess, on that one. But, uh, and then, the, you know, the, the other one that jumps out in my mind was, you know, we had a third and 17 and they threw a slip screen that um, I don't know if I would have changed the call any from what we did. We just didn't, uh, um, just didn't make the play. And, you know, sometimes that's going to happen too. But uh, uh, guys just keep playing hard and keep swinging and, and good things will happen. Come back home. You guys haven't had a home game. Yeah, we've been here forever. forever for a long time. Yeah, it's it's going to be awesome. I, I think that, um, I you know I give credit to TCU. I thought the crowd was was awesome. It was electric. It was, uh, um, you know, it, it made a difference in in that, um, you know, if they're down twenty eight ten and they're at our place and our crowd's getting on on it like they were, I don't know if they have the the fight to come back. You know, but being at home and then you know scoring before the end of the half and. Kind of carrying that momentum with them, just kind of kept them alive. I think, and you know, could could think things could have definitely been different had the environment been different. So one more play at you, the C gap run by Miller that went for I think forty eight. Been about yeah, pinpoint. Forget about that one. Pinpoint. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, um, you know that 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 again. Uh, um, you know, we probably should have been a. Uh, you know, I'm not saying anything about players. I, obviously, I, I could have. Put us in a different situation there too, but we, you know, if you look at that thing on tape, we probably had that thing knocked dead in the backfield, and um, and then we talk a lot about our our tackling angles and our tackling pursuit. And on that particular play, even if we missed that where we did, probably should have been knocked down for about ten, and it wasn't. And uh, um, that's the play that that got that whole drive started before the half, you know, and and. Uh, um, yeah, things like that happen, I and mean, that's football sometimes. But uh, you know, I, I still trust our guys to make those plays. So, what's the defense doing best right now? Uh, I think that uh, we're playing absolutely incredibly hard. Um, I think we're uh, still improving in our in our execution, but I think we get ourselves out of a lot of jams just because our guys play so dang hard uh, across the board. And I'm, I'm so proud of those guys for for that. And there's handful of guys that are playing just an incredible amount of snaps and and they're just taking it and they're, and they're going and, and we battled through a lot of uh, a lot of injuries we battled through a lot of uh, things and, and and you wouldn't know our guys just take it and keep you know grin and, and go in general, what makes Oklahoma State such a hard team to defend I think it starts with Spencer Sanders um, you know and his ability to run and uh, his ability to see the field really well I mean the guys been playing Forever, and, and you know he was a problem in 2019 when I when we first got here, uh, um, and uh, you know the design things that they have for him, and then the things that he does, uh, you know, uh, off the cuff, so to speak, with the, with his scrambles and and those things, extending plays, and then the fact that they're not afraid to take chances. I mean, sometimes guys get conservative, and uh, these guys will will push the ball down the field considerably, and and you know they're not afraid to. to Put themselves in second and ten just because they, or third and ten because they didn't know the quarterback can bail them out. Discussing your linebacker issues, is this an offense where you look at going some sixty back against? I, I think so. We tried to do that a little bit last week, and it, it just didn't. Uh, we did some. The situations weren't always um, right for it, but um, you know, we, we try to match personnel as much as we can. So if they have. Um, uh, Tight ends in the game, you know, we, we generally have bigger people in the game, and and that's not always true, but that's uh, uh, sometimes the uh, uh, the way we, we like to play it. And uh, and if they have a bunch of receivers in the game, we're going to have a bunch of little guys in the game, you know. Um, and again, that's not always true, but that's sometimes how we try to think about things. Bill Palmer was one of the linebackers that kind of got forced into duty last week. How did you evaluate his play and kind of got? You know, we we've both been getting better and better. He's kind of in the same track and the same path that Nick Allen was on. Um, a, you know, really two years ago, but but uh, but you know, he's probably further ahead than that. I mean, and he's more game ready. 
um, than Nick was two years ago at this time. And, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of faith in Bo. He runs the show. He understands what he's doing, and, and he's physical. And, and uh, you know, I think the, the reps are going to do nothing but help him.